What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're gonna look at text boxes with Kinter and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at text boxes, but before we get started, if you like this video and wanna see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so text boxes and Kinter are really kind of cool, actually. And we haven't talked about them till now, but we're gonna talk about them for the next few videos because you could do an enormous amount of stuff with these things. You could put text in them, you could put images in them, you could put other windows in them, you could do all kinds of stuff. You can use them to make text editors, and we may do that in the future. And, but most importantly, you can use them to do multiple lines of text, as you can see here. You know, in the past, we've done a lot with entry boxes, but those are generally just like one line, right? So you can make the box bigger, but it's still just like one line of text. Here, we can have as many lines as we want, and uh, that's cool. So uh, this is what we're gonna do in this video. We're just gonna get into the very basics of this because like I said, there is a lot going on with this text widget, and uh, it's gonna take us a while to sort of unpack it all. So, uh, let's go ahead and close this. I've got a file, I'm calling it text.py. We've got our basic starter code that we always have, our main loop. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. So first things first, let's just create a text box. So I'm gonna call this my text, and it's gonna be a text widget, and we wanna put it in root, and that's really all we need to do. We can also designate the height and width, so I'll just go ahead and do that. Let's go width equals 60, and height equals 20. Now these are not in pixels, this is in text widget whatever's units, I don't know. Uh, it's sort of like a list box where it's not pixels. So you just kind of have to sort of play around with these numbers to get it to look the way you want it to look. So let's go my underscore text dot pack. And let's give this a pad Y of 20, push it down the screen a little bit. Okay, so let's just go ahead and save this and run it just to see what this looks like right off the bat. So Python text dot pi. And you see we've got our thing and we can type stuff. So we can change the font color or the font size if we want, you know, just like we've done a zillion times before. So let's go font equals and let's go Helvetica and let's be like, I don't know, 16 or something. Save this, run it, pull this over. And now we have, you know, slightly bigger text maybe a little bit easier to read. So, okay, so far so good. Piece of cake, this is just, you know, sort of what we've always done with widgets in the past, very similar. But here's where it's gonna start to change a little bit. Let's create a button and let's make that button clear the screen. So actually I'm gonna create a frame because we're gonna have several buttons. So I'm gonna call this button frame and it's a frame widget. And we just wanna put it in root. And let's go button frame dot pack and just pack this onto the screen. So inside of here, we can create our button. So let's create a clear button. And that's gonna be a button. And we wanna put this in the button frame. And we want the text to equal clear screen. And let's give this a command of clear. So let's put this on the screen. So clear underscore button, we wanna grid these. Let's put it in row zero and column zero. And the reason why, oops, zero. And the reason why I'm grading these is because we're gonna have several buttons. We wanna put them all sort of next to each other in a line. So we're gonna grid these guys. So, okay, we've got our button. Now let's create our clear function. So let's come up here to the top and let's create clear function. And let's define this guy as clear. So. Now, what we wanna do is clear our text box. So we've typed some stuff in the text box. How do we delete all these things? So our text box is called my underscore text. So we call the delete function, and this is normal. We've deleted things like this in the past. And just like in things we've deleted in the past, like list boxes, for instance, uh, even entry boxes, we wanna put a range of positions here. So normally we would start at zero, and then we wanna delete everything and we would go to end. Now this is how we delete, delete things from entry boxes. This is how we delete things from list boxes, I believe. We've done this a lot of times. And you would think this is how you do it, but actually you don't. 
because text boxes don't start at zero like everything else in Python. You know, Python lists start at zero, tuples start at zero, all these Kinter widgets we've done always start at zero. Not so with the text box, it starts at 1.0. So it doesn't even start at one, it starts at 1.0. So I think probably this has to do with positioning. If we wanna get really granular and delete things like the 14th character on line one, we would probably go something like this. But uh, anyway, it starts out at 1.0 and we could designate to, to go to the end. So let's go ahead and save this and run it and see what this looks like. Did I mention it is Friday here in Las Vegas? stuff. That's right. It is Friday. Far day? Friday. There we go. Vegas, baby. <laughs> I have no plans for the weekend. Oh, yeah, I do actually have plans. We're not for drinks tomorrow. So let's see. You know what we've done? Ah, we need to make this whole thing bigger. So this button works on here. So okay, there we go. So now if we clear the screen, boom, that works. So, okay, so that's that. So let's move our width down to like 40 by 10, I don't know. Save this, let's run this guy again. Okay, so that's a little bit better size-wise. So, okay, anyway, <laughs> moving right along. So now we've got something we've typed into the text box, right? How do we get that back out and do stuff with it? You know, add it to a variable, save it to a file. That's one of the things we're gonna be looking at in the future videos, how to save the stuff that we type into that box into like a text file that we could save on our computer. So the first thing, the first step in that obviously is getting the text out. So how do we do that? Well, let's come down here, let's create another button and let's call this the, the uh, get text underscore button. I don't know. And this is a button and we wanna put this in the button frame. And let's get the text equal, uh, set the text equal to get text. And let's give this a command of get underscore text. And we'll make this function in just a second. So now let's get text button dot grid this guy. And let's put this in row zero and column equals one. Let's give this a pad X of like 20 to, you know, keep the buttons apart a little bit. So, okay, we've got that. Now let's create a function. Say grab the text from the text box. So let's define this guy, get text. So now how do we get this stuff? Well, let's come back down here again and underneath here, let's create a label like we always do. And that's gonna be a label. And we just wanna put this in root and the text will be nothing right now. And let's my underscore label dot pack and give this a pad Y of 20 to push it down the screen a little bit. So now we can take my label and let's output whatever's in our text box into our my label and slap it up on the screen. So we can do this as, as we always have. We can config this and set the text equal to what? Well, usually with other widgets, we get things and you can get from your text box as well. So we can go my underscore text dot get and this is the function. Now, just like when we deleted things, we need to declare a range of positions that we want to get from the text box. So you can get only one line, you can get, you know, many lines, you can do all these different things. So again, we start out, what position do we want to start? We want to start the very first line. It's not zero like we would normally think. It's again, 1.0. And we want to go to the end, just grab everything. So, all right, let's go ahead and save this and run this guy. So let's go, this is stuff, uh, line two, line five, four, whatever. Now if we get the text, it outputs it here. And you'll notice it even outputs the you know blank lines. So this is stuff, blank line, line two, line four, whatever. And we're good to go. We can clear this and that's cool. So, so like I said, we can get a range of text out of here. So instead of uh, getting from one to end, we could say from one to 3.0. So this will get from one up until line three. It won't actually copy line three. So it'll copy line one and line two, and it'll stop at line three. So that's what it means, this range means. It does not include this. So if you wanted line three, you would instead type four and you would stop at line four. So let's go ahead and save this and run it to see that this works. So let's go line one, line two, line three, and line four. 
And if we get the text, remember we're getting from one line from line one to line three, but not including line three. So it should just copy these first two lines. So if we click this, boom, line one and line two. And that's how that works. So that's the text box, very sort of introductory stuff for this thing. Like I said, there's a ton of stuff you could do. You can use this to create a text editor and all kinds of other things. You know, just right out of the box, it's handy if you need something, you know, like an entry box, but with multiple lines. If that's all you want to use it for, it works great for that and it's just this easy to use it. If you want to, you know, do something more complicated, put images in there, create, you know, rich text files with, uh, all kinds of different things, you can do that. You can save these things to files. You can open text files and output them here and it will keep the general format, right? Uh, you know, line breaks and things. So uh, just all kinds of stuff you could do with this thing. And like I said, we're probably gonna be looking at this for the next few videos, play around with this, since there's so much that we can do with this. And uh, that's cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 45 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.